What's going on everyone is Rocky in real time and I help people make location independent income as well as take advantage of geo arbitrage to help jumpstart their lives abroad and reach their financial goals. So if that's of any interest to you, consider liking, subscribing, commenting on the video and engaging with the content. Now, today's video I'm going to talk about 10 ways in which you can prepare to move to another country. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to determine what your reason is for leaving the US. It could be for personal, financial, or lifestyle reasons. You might want to retire on invested income that you've invested throughout your lifetime. You might want a lifestyle change and just sip drinks near the beach and run your toes through the sand. Or you might want to just save money and take advantage of geo-arbitrage and use that money to start some sort of online business or something. Whatever the reason is, you need to be very crystal clear on what that reason is because you're going to use that to motivate you and fuel you throughout this process because you're going to do a lot of things precursor and prior to you leaving the US. The next thing you want to do is you want to organize your finances. You want to pay off your bills, your debts, or any financial obligations that you have before you leave. This could be credit cards, this could be student loans, maybe even that overdue book at the library. But whatever it is, you want to pay it off so that it doesn't rear its ugly head in the future. You want to be able to come back and not have to worry about any financial implications uh, or consequences that you might have to face because of that debt that you left before you, you know, before you left the United States. So because of that, you need to consolidate all your bills, all your loans and any financial obligations or responsibilities that you have. And you need to have an action plan to pay them off before you leave. So let's just say you're leaving in about a year or so. So that gives you 12 months to deplete all those bills and they don't have to be completely zero or completely paid off because we live in the age of technology you don't have to send checks or send you know a slip with your credit card information in the mail anymore we can do things online but the point i'm trying to make is you want to pay off as much debt as you possibly can and maybe pay off the rest when you leave online uh, through a series of payments because you do not want to be coming back to the United States and, and find out you owe this in taxes or this overdue book is now $1,000 or this credit card bill is hindering you from actually opening up a new travel credit card. You don't want any of that. That's just going to be annoying and it's going to be frustrating to deal with. So to prevent all that, consolidate your bills, consolidate your loans and anything that you might owe or have financial responsibility for and start to pay them off as much as you can before you leave. So the next thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to do a lot of research about your target or destination country. Now, that involves a lot. Now, this is why you need to iron out your motivation for wanting to leave because that's gonna coincide with a lot of the research that you're gonna to have to do. So you're gonna to need to do things like research the cost of living, the economic and political situations in the country, the social norms and etiquettes and culture. You're gonna to need to introduce yourself to new languages if you need to learn them. And even simple things like how to ship things from your country to the destination country. You're gonna to need to do a lot of research. So you're gonna be combing blogs, vlogs, articles online and different resources you can get so that you can learn about your destination country. The more research that you do before you get there, the better for you because you're gonna be armed with knowledge and things that can help you guide decisions that you make when you're there. Now, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to make location independent income before you leave. Now, I stress this out a lot on my channel and what location independent income basically means is that you can pick up a laptop or computer and you can take it with you and make money wherever you are in the world. Now, this might not be mandatory depending on your destination country. If you go to from one first world country to another, but if you're going to a developing nation from a first world country, then you're probably going to be taking advantage of geo arbitrage. If you're new to that concept, all it means is that you're making pounds, dollars, euros, yen, Canadian dollars, whatever, and from one country and you're living in another country where the cost of living is much, much cheaper. Now that divide and that sort of gap between the money you're making and the money that you're actually spending is going to be great and you're gonna be able to invest that money and do other things with it, like start businesses and whatever. The crux of the point that I'm trying to make here is that you need to start make that location independent income. And it can come from freelancing, it can come from having a remote job, it can come from having an online business. And for me, I very, very strongly support 
selling digital products. I have a video about that and how to do that on a budget. Check that out here or here. Um, but yeah, you're going to need to do that before you leave because that's, you know, something that is going to allow you to free yourself to be able to move freely, right? Because during this process, you're probably going to be traveling a lot. And within that country, you're probably going to be trying to pick what city or town you're going to live in. And that's going to involve a lot of travel. So you need a location independent job or some sort of income that allows you to work remotely and from anywhere. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to figure out the visa and immigration requirements as per your country. Now, this is going to vary greatly depending on which country you're coming from and which country you're going to. But a lot of it involves background checks. Um, proof of identity and a lot of other legal documents that you need to be either apostilled or certified by your home country and given to the embassy of your destination country or there's some sort of processing office on ground when you go there that you submit them to and you get your visa approved and stamped and whatever. Now, like I said, this is going to really just depend on the country that you're going to and your country of origin. But look this up. Go on your country of destinations um, embassy's website and go and find out all the details you need and all the information you need to start getting the visa requirements ready. This usually takes some time, so you know, make sure you get on that early. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do is budgeting and financial planning. Now, you're going to need to sit down and go through all of your expenses that you make in a month and itemize everything. You're going to need to detail all your necessities and all your necessary expenses and you're going to need to detail all your luxuries and you're going to need to itemize them put them in a list and compare and contrast your city of origin to your destination city using sites like numibo expatison or my life elsewhere these are sites that just compare and contrast the, the cost of living for different categories of expenses between two cities that you pick there's a bunch of sites like that out there so just use them and sort of start to do your financial planning you need to understand your current expenses, where you can make optimizations, what you need to take out, what you want to include. Maybe you want to get better health care in your destination country. You need to make optimizations because you don't want to be spending superfluously because the process of moving itself is pretty expensive. It can range from anywhere from 6,000 to 10,000 and up, depending on where you're going, what you're spending money on, how many trips you're taking back and forth. So this is why budgeting and financial planning is essential in this process. When you make these optimizations and you cut out all the little expenses that you don't really need, as well as the fact that you're probably going to be taking advantage of geo arbitrage, you can start to make investments. Now, this is not investment advice, but this is just something I do. Like I invest in the S&P 500 and the BRBS, which is the Blue Ridge Bank shares. And I just invest in that because they pay dividends. So you can invest in dividend paying stocks. Like I said, again, this is not any financial advice. This is just basically what I do as an example, but choose whatever investments that you deem worthy to meet your financial goals and worthy to invest. And you can also start reading blogs like the Nerd Wallet. The Motley Fool or Vanguard to get inspiration on what to invest in or just investment tips and pointers so that you can start to experiment with your investments. Again, do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial professional, but with the extra money that you are saving, you could hire and contract a financial advisor to help you assess your expenses and what you need to put away every month to meet your financial goals. That's exactly what I did. During this process, I hired a financial advisor and I spoke with him several times to iron out what I needed to do to reach my financial goals and how long that would take, what I needed to invest in. And he gave me a lot of tips and pointers from a professional investment perspective. I also highly suggest that you have a savings of about bare minimum $10,000. Like I mentioned before, this whole process of moving to a new country can be pretty expensive and you're going to be moving back and forth. You're going to be buying furniture. You're going to be putting a lease down for a new apartment and all these things can be quite pricey. So having that money saved up is going to help you a lot in the process. Also having good credit will help you out a lot because you can get things like travel credit cards and not have to pay for flights. I haven't had to pay for flights for several trips that I've made back and forth from here back to the United States and, and, and so on and so forth because of the points I've accumulated and that's because I have good credit. So that's something else that you want to consider along in this process is 
financial planning, budgeting, and making sure your credit is in good standing. Also, unexpected expenses are almost inevitable. I don't think I've met anyone that has gone through this process, including myself, that hasn't had these random unexpected expenses that are just related to moving just pop out of nowhere and just like kind of ruin your day or just like make you have to spend money that you didn't really want to spend. But again, that's life and that does happen and it probably will happen in this process. So you need to be prepared for it. So make sure you save that money. Now, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is consider all the tax implications of you being in another country. Now, you could be working for a company, you could have your own business, you could be a consultant, or you could just be living off your investments. The one thing that you wanna do is you wanna seek tax professionals both in your home country and your destination country to see what you're gonna be on the hook for for paying for taxes and to see where you can make optimizations to save money on taxes, both home and abroad. You're gonna to need to seek professionals in this process because you don't wanna do your taxes yourself and you don't wanna make mistakes that are gonna cost you thousands of dollars in the long run. Trust me, I've been there and it's not a fun process paying back money to Uncle Sam. So if you wanna avoid this, just hire tax lawyers to help you organize your situation both home and in your destination country so that you can optimize your life to pay the least amount of taxes that you need to pay. Because there's like two things certain in life and that's death and taxes. And if you wanna avoid your taxes or pay the least amount of taxes um, that you'll be on the hook to pay legally, then seek professionals because they'll be your best bet in helping you do that. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to test drive your country, your new country. And when I say test drive, what I really mean is you're going to need to go and take a trip there and spend a considerable amount of time, maybe somewhere between three to six months, because you can do all the research in blogs, Facebook groups, vlogs, YouTubers who already live in a country and whatever resource you want to use to do research. You can do as much research as you possibly can, but nothing beats actually living in the country because you're gonna to start to notice all the things that you don't like, all the things that you don't wanna tolerate, all the things that you can tolerate, and all the things that you do like about the country. And that's just gonna come with time because if you're only there for a few weeks, you're still gonna have these rose colored glasses. And if you wanna live in a country, you're gonna to need to sort of figure out what you don't like about the country because every country has its pros and cons of living there. And you wanna stay there long enough to have those rose colored glasses come off and see the country for what it actually is. Um, and that's only gonna take some time. That's gonna take, from my experience, anywhere between three to six months. One other very important consideration that you wanna make is health insurance. Maybe you want to get on a public insurance in your destination country if it's good enough, or some private insurance, or maybe some international traveler's insurance. Whatever it is, please have some health insurance before you get there or when you get there, because you never know when these unexpected health occurrences are gonna happen. We're human and these things happen. No matter how healthy you are, you wanna be safe and secure in the fact that if you do need to go to a hospital, that you're covered locally or internationally, or wherever you are, you could be traveling, you could be just stationary in one country, but make sure you have some health insurance, whether it be some health insurance that's local or national, to the country you're in, or some international traveler's insurance that can just cover you wherever you go. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna do a little bit of networking before you get to your destination country. Now, the first place you wanna start is the expat groups surrounding the city or the country that you're gonna to move to, like maybe expats of Bali, expats of Brazil, expats of the Philippines, expats of Colombia, wherever your destination country is, join the expat group, start talking to people, asking questions, and start figuring out what mistakes you need to avoid while you're moving there and what things you need to be aware of. Now, your friend circle shouldn't be just limited to expats. You wanna make friends with locals as well. The best way to do that is to make friends and friends groups um, through interests that you might mutually share with locals. Like, let's say you're into photography you might join a group like Bali photographers, right? So you might join the group and meet locals who are photographers and they might take you to wildlife spots or places that the expats won't even know about because they're locals. And you can get some great photography shots and other things by connecting with them. Maybe you like CrossFit, maybe you like cosplay. 
They can tell you about all the cosplay events and Comic-Con and all the other events that are, you know, linked to that niche. They might know better than the expats. So make sure you connect with locals as well. And like I said, the best way to do this is through the interest that you might mutually share. Now, one other tip, and this is very important. One other major tip that I have for you is to beware of scammers. Now, scammers, they traverse these groups looking for unsuspecting victims to take advantage of because you're going to be in a very vulnerable state. You're moving to a new country. You don't have many friends. You don't have a big network in this country. So you're going to be eager to meet people. And some of these people are scammers. Not all of them. A very, very small, small percentage of them. I'm just trying to be um, very just candid and open and let you be aware of some of the dangers of, you know, these groups. I, again, I said most of these people are just there to help and they're normal people, but scammers do understand that people who move abroad, they come with a lot of electronics, they come with money, they come with, you know, wide open eyes and unsuspecting hearts. So you want to be careful because they do take advantage of expats and people moving there. So just, just be on the lookout. Also, one key tip to notice whether you're in cahoots or talking to a scammer is they want you to wire money to them quickly. Like they're probably going to have no friends or very few friends on their Facebook or their Instagram or whatever. And they have a very few pictures that don't really show their face or look like they could be gotten from somewhere else. They probably don't speak English as well as you do or might not pick up on certain slang or cultural references that might be commonplace to the place that they say they're from. So be careful because they're pretty easy to spot, but sometimes these guys can be very good. Now, the last tip I have to you is be prepared to adapt culturally. You're gonna be in a new country. You're gonna be meeting new people and you're going to be learning a lot of new things, a lot of cultural nuances, a lot of cultural etiquettes. And there's gonna be a lot of differences between what you know and what they know and your reality and their reality. There's gonna be a huge culture shock for you and that's okay. That's perfectly fine, it happens. But one thing you have to do is be open-minded. Be open-minded when it comes to their food, their culture, their dating, their you know understanding of the world, their politics, their religion. You're in a new country. You're going to be walking on eggshells when it comes to that. You don't wanna offend anybody. You don't want to sort of um, say anything that might ruffle some feathers. You gotta just take your time and learn these things because you're in a new space. This is not your home. This is another person's home, but this is your new home. This is a place that you're making home. So you want it to be as comfortable as possible. And one of the best ways to do that is to learn the cultural norms that dictate the place that you're in. There's gonna be a lot of nuances and differences that you're gonna have to accept. Don't look down on people and the culture of a place. Just all around be respectful. This is a place that you're calling home. So just be respectful of the place, the culture, and the things that have already existed prior to you being there. Now, I hope you found some value in this video. I try to make this list as exhaustive and as beginner friendly as possible. These are a lot of the things that I had to consider when I was moving to Brazil. I had to consider the culture, the language, and all the other things that I had to learn prior to my move. And it was a lot, it was a lot, and it's still, a learning process you're always going to be learning because you know this is a new place to you relatively um, i hope you got some value from this video consider subscribing like comment share these videos and yeah uh thanks for watching